Hi everybody, welcome to the second video lecture, which if you have followed the directions is the last thing you will be watching in this first two-week review of graphic media. Uh, I'm calling this a lecture, but I'm actually not going to talk very much because you have already listened to quite a lot of spoken explanation in the chapter readings for this week and because I just want to show you some images and let them speak for themselves. We've looked this week at how visual images and mental images or concepts are related, and I want to give you one more illustrative exercise and talk a little bit about where we're going to go from here in the course as we start bringing in different kinds of media as well. So first, I'm going to show you a few different graphics that are all representations of a concept you're already familiar with, and then we'll talk about them as a set at the end. So here we go. So what do you see in all of these graphics? These are all visualizations of Bloom's taxonomy, but as you can see, they represent the same mental object or conceptual object in different ways. Uh, just to point out a few things, if you look at the stack versus the expand, they both emphasize six layers, but one is stacking upwards and one is expanding outwards, and if you notice, the final layer of creating is the smallest up here, and then it's the biggest over here. So what does that do in terms of how you mentally represent the relationship between these different layers? Then over here, the dip bowl is starting off the same way with three layers in sequence, but then it switches it up and it puts analyzing, evaluating, and creating all together at the top instead of on their own separate layers. So again, this is a different way of representing it. Over here, the rose gets rid of layers entirely uh, and puts everything into a circle or a cycle with a different kind of relationship between the different categories. While the matrix over here uh, adds a second set of layers to create this grid pattern. So all of these are different perceptual images representing the same mental image in a way. And they emphasize different features of that core shared concept. Or as we say as designers, they have different affordances. And these are just simple still images. We haven't even gotten to other types of media. If you think back to week one, I think I can actually play it. Yeah. I gave you this video as well as this image over on the right. And so the video uses not just text and image, but also motion and speech and this weird narrative about lemons to explain Bloom's taxonomy. So again, the affordances, the ways that we intuitively interact and make meaning with different media can make a big difference to what we ultimately learn about something that's being communicated and how we remember it. Bill Cope pointed out some of the differences just between text and image in the sixth video from this week's chapter, like how Writing is very good at telling a story over time with relationships that are determined by cause and effect and things that happen one after the other. Well, images are very good at showing uh, other kinds of relationships, spatial relationships or conceptual relationships in the case of diagrams. 
between different elements in an overall picture that you can see all at once, a single moment in time. And that's really just one example, one first step in understanding how different media have different affordances and are well suited to different ways of communicating information. But the take home point from this week's readings isn't that it's all different and all is chaos and woe be unto ye. It's that different medias have different affordances, but we can learn to analyze them with a consistent process so that we can make pedagogical decisions about what kind of media to use in a lesson and how to best present concepts in a way that will support our learning objectives. As several of the pieces we read this week pointed out, Western education privileges writing and language over other forms of communication, and I think more than a few of you are still falling back on writing and language analysis in our discussions because that's what you're comfortable with. But I'm telling you, and Kalantzis and Cope are telling you, that it really is the same underlying process for interpreting writing and interpreting graphics and interpreting sound and all the different media we're studying in this course. And once you get comfortable with that process, that's when we are really going to make progress. But you have to try to relax your language brains a little bit and start observing media elements other than words. So that's it for this week. I promised this lecture would be short. It was. Next week, we're going to move on to audio media. And so I will be talking a lot more then. So for now, I'm going to go rest up my voice to get ready for that, and I will catch up with you on Blackboard.